Want more Exposed? Head on over to the podcast where you can listen to completely new episodes from this YouTube channel, uh, Exposed Dragged Out. And while you're here, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can get all of the notifications about when new episodes of Exposed are coming up. You literally had so many memeable moments, or memes as you said. Okay. There, okay. I was talking to Aja recently, and she said that when you were on All Stars 3, and you had that lipstick of milk, she said you could not have flipped that thing faster. She said she laughed every single time because they made all the memes where Rue would be like, and hey, Kennedy, who do you, milk. Kennedy, with great power, milk. Yeah, that, that's not how that goes. And that's not how that went. They just cut my talking out. And that is so tired because um, although I knew who I wanted to go home, I did have something to say. And I did not cut her off. And, and, and as a matter of fact, they tell us not to go do it so fast. They tell us to say something you know what I'm saying? You have to, you, it's the drama of it all. So I did not do it that fast, child. You you also mentioned during, or like in, during All Stars 3, you said you had like a little moment where you had talked about that you don't like feeling like, you know, the last minute of somebody, if they're at a meet and greet or at drag con or something mm -hmm. and people, you mm -hmm. know, you, you're kind of like an afterthought. Mm -hmm. What has this fan base been like towards you uh, since all stars it was like a, a complete turnaround um and i oh i still get emotional um they have been so great to me they have been so wonderful um even with everything that's going on right now um it i mean it was it just validates me me being the person that I am. They saw, finally saw the Kennedy down that I wanted them to see. And um, the fan base is so great. And I didn't, you know, you still get the little airheads and stuff that, that are just plain ignorant, but I don't pay any attention to them, um, you know, or they just have no access to me. Um, but the fan base that truly love me, they, they tell me they love me every day. And my true fan base has not given up. They still hit me up, although I'm not on TV. Um, they still make me feel relevant. Um, they love my family just as much as they love me. And you can't ask for anything else. I love that. I love that it turned around because after season seven, that must have been hard. And then to come yeah, on. Yeah, it was very three. hard. It was a very hard journey. Yeah, it was a very hard journey. I mean, I got called the N word. I got I got um, people wishing that I was dead. You know, just young, stupid stuff. I got all of that too. You know, and I don't. You know, I knew that I had my work cut out for me. I knew I was gonna have to damn near break my neck to just prove to people that I wasn't what they saw on television, and that's what I did. If it if it meant answering every message, if it meant, you know, ha indulging in a conversation with somebody who has talked down on me, I did it. You know, some people like ignore the haters, ignore, I ignore some, but I also hit some people up and changed their mind about me because a lot of times they just looking for attention or a lot of times they may be struggling in their own life. So I, t I, I did find myself asking a few of them, like, why do you feel this way? You know, why, why, why such the, the hostility and why you have to talk to me like that and you don't even know who I am, you know? And a lot of that, uh, a lot of that interaction helped. Mm -hmm. Did, so did they respond after you said that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that that's, pretty amazing that you had the balls to end up sending a message back. Like, I, I feel like I would be like, I don't know why, but I feel like I'd be scared. I'd be like, no. Uh, no, no nobody, don't nobody scare, nobody scare me but God. Mm. <laughs> nobody put no fear, nobody put no fear in my heart, you know? Mm. And um, 
this is a business and social media for any queen should be, if you're not on stage, social media should be at least 80% of your time. And that's how I feel. So I'm always checking my messages. I'm always indulging with my with with my fans and stuff and talking to them. And if it's just a simple heart or a simple like to just let them know I see them, that's that's the most important to me. Because I feel like it's 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 the quality versus the quantity. That's so true. That that's literally so true. It's the, those interactions and then just the fact that you are responding and doing that just says a whole lot about you. But that's engaging your fans at the end of the day. Like coming yeah. on the internet and engaging with them is going to be why they keep coming to your shows and why they keep, you know, supporting you at the end of the day because they love that. They love the interaction. Correct. Correct. And that's all that, that's all they want. And that was really my whole point um, when they chopped up my speech (laughs) of season seven. Um, I knew at that particular time that my counterparts, mainly Violet and Pearl, that they just wasn't ready for what the fan base was wanting to give to them. You know what I'm saying? They clearly, you know, they just wasn't people, in my opinion, at that time, I let me be specific. At that time, they just were not people persons. They were not they, they were, you know what I'm saying? So that was that's all I was trying to say. But you know, I I grew to love Violet and I grew to love Pearl and I love all of my sisters on RuPaul's Drag Race um season seven and I miss them terribly. But you know. It, at the end of the day, it's all about who they chose to be in that top three. It had nothing to do with them. It had nothing to do with them. It was a decision that, that you know, that it's just like a pageant. If I win the pageant, I didn't judge myself. So you can't be mad at me. <laughs> I didn't judge myself. You know, so it's very that. So, I, you know, I was never bitter. I was never, ever bitter at none of them you know what i'm saying because i understand the business i understand how it goes you know Mm -hmm. so you you mentioned being judged and for all stars three you're judged by your peers and Mm -hmm. they put you in the top two Mm -hmm. your the look on your face was of shock were you shocked uh, I was shocked, and I was also shocked that I had the most votes. I had the most votes. Like I, it was like, it was like, I was in that thing hands down. It was unanimous. Like I would have won the show had we not had to lip sync. Had they voted for for a winner, I would have won because I even had more votes to Trixie. Like I'm t- probably like three or four more votes than you know her, but um, it was shocking. But I was also confident that when when it, the announcement came that they were going to be uh, voting who made the top two, I was confident because I knew what I had poured into that workroom. I knew the conversations that I had with each and every one of them, you know? So it wasn't like, oh Lord, I'm gonna go home. I didn't feel that. I felt confident. I felt like, you know what? It is what it is. I've done my best and there's nothing more that I can do. And I, and, and I was grateful that my sister saw the same thing.